Hello everyone, welcome back to another session of Dark Souls PvP, and finally, uh, 10 tips for beginners video. Now this video was a long time coming, and it was requested quite a while back. It took longer for me to get to than I would have liked, but here it is. Now these tips I got from, well, myself, and from a few friends in the Dark Souls community who are very good PvPers. So thank you to everyone who helped, shout out to all you guys, you know who you are, thank you for the help. And to everyone watching it, I hope you guys enjoy the video. So, getting started with the tips. Probably the second most important tip that I could give for Dark Souls PvP is when you're invading someone, pay attention to what they're wearing. So when you're coming in as you invade, when you're gesturing, when you're buffing, take a look at your opponent's armor and their weapon choice. Now, this guy, for example, he's wearing the Crown of Dusk, so I know at some point in the fight he's going to pull out magic of some kind. It's just general things like that that really help you expect what's going to happen and really can sort of make a difference in the fight. Right there I was able to just roll in through his Wrath of the Gods because I saw him switch to the Catalyst, or the Talisman rather, and I knew it was coming, so I was able to roll for the backstab. It's just certain things like that that can really make a difference. Now, in addition to that, paying attention to the armor, you can also get a vague idea of how much poise that the person has. For example, this guy has robes on, so he's got very low poise. You can also tell he does not have the wolf ring on because he does not have the aura from it. So, again, he has very low poise. So, moving on from here. Related to poise, knowing the poise breaks is a very important thing. Just having a vague idea of them is good, but knowing them like exactly is even better. I personally don't even know all of them exactly, I just have a vague idea of the common ones being the ones for 53 poise, which is where a majority of players will keep their poise. Now, for a 53 poise you can withstand a two-handed greatsword R1, you can withstand a one-handed ultra greatsword R1, so on and so forth. I will find the list of poise breaks somewhere and put the link in the description for those who want to see the entire list because it's helpful to look it over, have a general idea of it because you can really know what poise you want. You can learn to... Eh, what's the right way to say it? You can learn to sort of just, when you're looking at your opponent, sort of size up what sort of poise they've got and take advantage of that. So it's a good thing to keep in mind. Moving on from here, tip number three. Watching for weapon switches and taking advantage of them. I got this tip from one of my good friends, and it's a very good tip. Now, taking advantage of, that, taking advantage of them can go in two ways. You can either take advantage of it in an offensive way or in a defensive way. The defensive way is when you see a weapon switch, roll away from them. That's the best defensive way you can get, because chances are they're going to be switching to a weapon that is... Well, not a weapon, it'll be a casting tool of some kind, being a Talisman, Catalyst, or Pyromancy Flame. So it's really important to keep that in mind, and you don't really want to be close to those things. Now, for taking advantage of it in an offensive way, if your opponent is too close to you when they switch their weapons, it leaves them open to an attack, which after that you can get out of there quickly if your weapon is fast enough and recovers fast enough, or it leaves them open to a backstab in some cases. So that can really change the tide of the fight and really make a difference in the end. So that's one good thing to keep in mind, keep it in the back of your head. Chances are you're going to be doing it without even really thinking about it. So it's just something to keep in mind. Now, moving on from here, we've got tip number four. Knowing the length of your weapon and the length of your opponent's weapon, it's something you can really take advantage of if your reach is longer or you'll have to play more defensively if your reach is shorter. So, yeah, you'll have to compensate if you have a shorter weapon, but that's just the way it is. And that is not a sex joke, by the way. So, I'm not... never mind. Moving on. Moving on. Just... just moving on. <laughs> um, tip number five. You need to pay attention to how much, we how much damage your weapon does and how much damage your opponent's weapon does. And you really shouldn't be afraid to trade hits with your opponent, especially if you're out damaging them. Now, the reason I'm saying this, and the reason I'm sort of advocating for trading hits, is because you can really trade hits for a killing blow. Now, that's a really good thing to do in a lot of cases, and in the end, it really will 
benefit you more because, I mean, you traded them for the killing hit, you can still live if they're not swinging at the time, or not if they're not swinging at the time, but if you survive their hit and you're out damaging them. That's what I'm trying to say. So you can really sort of judge how much damage your opponent's weapon does, sort of size it up a little bit, and take advantage of that. Now, I'm not saying trading hits is an ideal situation, but it's not something that you should be so adamant to avoid. And chances are it's going to happen anyway without you even without you even intending to do it. So why bother trying to fight it? Just let it happen and expect it. Take advantage of it and be prepared. So that's my take on that. Now, moving on yet again, tip number six, now that we've passed the halfway point. Um, don't be afraid to R1 spam occasionally. Now, I'm not saying do it all the time, only R1 spam, but... Mixing in a little bit of R1 spam, three attacks at a time or so, no more than that in general, is a good thing to do, because what that means is your opponent will not always expect it. I mean, I don't know if it's just when people are fighting me, but they tend to not expect me to R1 spam. Maybe it's just because I'm an uploader and so on and so forth, but if you R1 spam a little bit, just three swings at once, they won't expect it. Now. No, that's not to say that you should R1 spam a lot, it's just an occasional thing, and don't be afraid to mix in some R2s, a little bit of R2 spam maybe, jumping attacks, running attacks, jumping attacks are fantastic because they can't be parried, so keep that in mind. Now, the ability to combo with all of those is really what you want, but don't be afraid to R1 spam a little bit because it's not the end of the world. Chances are, you're going to be fighting someone who is not able to parry you 100% every single time. I mean, there are players like that, but they're not the majority. So when you're just doing random invasions, don't be afraid. Just do what you can, don't be afraid. So, next on the list, number 7. Mix up your weapon choices. This is probably one of the tips I give the most often. Mixing up your weapon choices is a very good thing to do in Dark Souls, and that's one of the reasons why I love quality builds. It lets you use the majority of the weapons in the game, so aside from the fact that your opponent won't know what to expect, you can really learn a lot by using different weapons. So the reason I'm saying you can learn a lot is because in my opinion, <clears throat> excuse me, in my opinion, the best way to learn how to counter against a weapon is by learning to use that weapon yourself. And then you can observe, sort of, after the fact, how your opponents fought you. And by doing that, you can sort of learn how to fight people who are using that weapon. Chances are you're going to run into someone who's better than you at some point while you're PvPing that day, and they'll definitely show you something that's worthwhile learning. So definitely try that out. You would definitely have to think of it sort of after the fact, because in the middle of a match you're not going to be focused on how and why your opponent's doing what they're doing. They're going to be more focused on killing them, but after the fact it's a good thing to fo sort of think about when you're in between invasions, because, I mean, invasions aren't exactly immediate always, so it's a good thing to do. So next on the list, number eight. Notice common patterns of attacking and react accordingly. Now this tip is a really good one, and there are quite a few common attack patterns and common patterns in general that people will do. A lot of them would be rolling attacks, rolling attack spam, um, R1 spam, if they do it exclusively it's good to do a setup parry and just take care of them, they'll learn quickly enough. Um, in addition to that, run up and parry method, that run up and parry method. It gets me more often than I would like it to, and so does the roll in and parry method. It's a little variation of the run up parry, and they both get me more often than I would like. But if you can expect someone to do it, which chances are they'll be doing it with a target shield, a buckler, or the parrying dagger, so keep paying attention to your opponent's weapons and such, you'll be able to predict that they're going to try and parry you at some point in the fight and the run up and parry method is quite common recently from what I've seen. So, ways to react according to, accordingly to the common patterns that I mentioned. The rolling attack spam, you would just parry it. The R1 spam, do a setup parry. The run up parry method, if they do it more than once, then just circle around them and backstab them. It's so easy to walk around and backstab them and punish them for it. It's just pathetically easy to do. 
So keep that in mind and don't be afraid to do it. Same goes for the roll in and parry method. It's really easy to do. So moving on, getting towards the end of the list. This tip is aimed more at the advanced players and people who really want to advance in the game as far as their PvP is concerned. And this is one of uh, the tips I came up with more recently. Every week or two, try out something you consider to be more advanced. A few examples would be something like learning how to parry, dual wielding, reverse rolling, which the Sunlight Blade has an excellent video on, by the way, check that out if you haven't, weapon switching, which I believe it was, yeah, it had to be, um, spades, he put up a video the other day which was in the Sunlight Blade's top 10 cosplays video of him going through five different full sets of armor and weapons in a one single fight. Weapon switching is something I've actually been working on recently. I'll have a video of that coming up shortly, so if you're interested, keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, other more advanced techniques would be playing with zero poise. That's always interesting and fun to try out. And unlocked play and mixing in all of those. Now, all of those might not necessarily be part of your playstyle or work well with your playstyle, but even just doing them will help you learn what to expect from people who do them regularly and who do include them in their playstyle. So, with reverse rolling, I know if I just backstep, then they will not be able to get behind me for a reverse roll backstab. So, it's just things like that that you need to keep in mind and things like that that really do help when you're trying to get better at the game. So those are some more advanced tips, things that you can try out. I personally do all of them, I have done all of them, and they're pretty fun to do. So moving on from here, the last tip, the most important tip I could ever give, don't be afraid to lose. It's a game, it's supposed to be fun, you're going to lose though, that's the way PvP is. So don't worry about it, take chances, have fun with it. Don't worry about all the salt, there will be salt, just let it go, it's a game. It's so stereotypical to say, but some people seem to forget that sometimes. So you just gotta relax and take it easy. It's a game, have fun, take chances, do stupid things. This game is so much fun to do stupid things in, and as long as you're having fun with it, then who cares, all power to you. Have fun with the game, it's, you know, kind of what it's meant for. So. That's really the last tip I've got. It's really the most important one, too. I mean, as long as you're having fun, who cares if you're good at the game or bad? I mean, who cares if you follow all the tips that I gave or if you just completely choose to ignore them, as long as you have fun with the game. That's really just my take on it. So, those were the 10 tips for beginners that I had in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful in one way or another. I hope you advanced, more advanced players might have found something useful, thought of a good idea. If you have any ideas for tips, please leave them in the comments so other people can see them. This is the last fight in the video, so again, I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you found it helpful in one way or another. Please like, subscribe, and all that good stuff, and I will see you next time.